Tonight will be probably the wildest teaching that I'm ever going to give. I have a very, very crazy theory, but it seems to be the most plausible when I look at uh, our current situation, when I look at it scientifically, historically, but most of all, biblically, biblically. And then even if you look at it spiritually, it will make sense. So, obviously, a lot of us have heard about the Georgia Guidestones. On, we're wondering who gave it the explosion. Some people think that it was the Lord who sent lightning from heaven. Other people believe that it was the work of globalists who tried to cover their tracks. So, I don't profess to know exactly what happened, but I believe on what's going on with the Georgia Guidestones being blown up, the leadership being changed with Boris Johnson getting out and then uh, Shinzo Abe where something happened with him, he got assassinated and then Japan's in a mess. The Bilderbergers had their meeting, yeah. mid-elections coming up, people are really predicting that our, even our current American government, the, things, the seats are gonna switch with majority Republicans and Biden getting out. Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein being cleaned up. You heard about the recent case of her. Some are now wondering if uh, Prince, uh, was it Andrew or Charles, I forgot. They're wondering if he's going to be next, the one who's going to take over uh, Queen Elizabeth. The Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein being cleaned up. UFO suddenly being reported out of nowhere. That was crazy. And obviously, um, so... This one, we're going to call it Bill Gates Barf, okay? So we'll call it Billy Barf. So y'all know what I mean when I keep saying Billy Barf. Billy Barf coming out and it's become a real mess and a lot of people have been troubled by it and it's been transitioning to a new variant and a lot of people are getting concerned where this will head to and especially when we're going to the next stage of evolution or as a civilization, I think all this crazy stuff, I know how this is all tied together. So all this crazy stuff that we hear, I believe there is one thing, one goal in Satan's mind. It's all tied to one goal. And that's why all this stuff is happening. Now you might go, how are you going to tie it all up? It's going to be tied to Jesuits, Vatican, the Pope as well. How is, does this all tie together? I think I got one. So... This is going to be probably the most mind-blowing thing I'm going to teach, or it may not be. It may not be that uh, mind-blowing to you, but I think I can see how this also connects to Genesis 6, population control, why the longevity of humans in Noah's time changed to a, a lower lifespan, the Temple Mount, why that's so important, Tower of Babel, Jesuits and their Catholic Babylon of Revelation 17, 18, how the Antichrist will come into this world, the globalist secret plan behind all of this, but most of all, Lucifer's real agenda for all of this. All of this, I'm tying to one thing. One thing. Now, this is going to be real big, so let's do it one by one. I think where we start out, believe it or not, if all of these human things are going on. Remember, if we believe that Satan is the God of this world and he's in charge of a lot of evil things that are going on with humanity and what the elitists are doing, we have to go back. We have to return to Satan, the spiritual power. Not a banker, not a Rothschild, and not Biden, especially not that guy. He don't know what he's doing. Not some kind of secret globalist behind the scenes who's really behind it. No. We have to see plainly from the Bible, it all comes down to Satan. If there was no Satan where he doesn't concoct the evil uh, with his spirit behind the globalists, you wouldn't get all these things happening in our world, what you're hearing about. So we have to go back to him. His principalities and his powers, his demonic beings. That's where you want to hit. If you want to hit there, then we can start knocking out all the other events one by one. What's the event? What's the thing that's closest that the world is seeing 
that connects to Satan. UFOs. That's it. That's the answer. All right, let's all go home and pray. <laughs> now you might go, what? how does this all connect to UFOs, right? Like, how does this all connect to UFOs? Bear with me one by one, all right? Travel on this journey with me and we'll go. Now, first of all, we have to, and then in the end, we're going to see why it connects to Georgia Guidestones at the end, because that's the topic of this video. Georgia Guidestones tied to UFOs, and it'll connect to all of this together. Let's do it one by one. First of all, we have to understand that there is no doubt the higher-ups out there, they want to try to cover, cover up as much of the UFO phenomenon as much as they can. Uh, they don't call it UFO now. I think they call it UAP or something like that, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, because they, they are recognizing the truth with aliens and UFOs, but they don't want to go that far. So then they'll just say it's some kind of abnormality that we see some kind of weird thing up there in the skies, but we can't explain it. So scientists, and even the government itself, the top brass, they have to acknowledge that. They have to acknowledge that much. This is from The Hill, the title of their article, Stunned by UFOs, exasperated fighter pilots get little help from Pentagon. Hence, we see they want to cover it up. It's not, they don't want it to make it as much of an uproar. You might say, why? Because if every day what you saw on CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News was UFO, UFO, and not this guy, what do you think the fear of the world will be? It's going to be on this, not on this. So they can't do that. So that's why they'll just, exp uh, because it's so much exposure, it's plain as day, and I'm going to give the evidences later, they're trying to make it as little as possible so that society don't get into shock mode and get into an uproar. There is no doubt UFOs and even aliens, they are real in the Bible. You might say, why is that? Because there are scriptures about it. Of At least what you have to recognize is something outside of this world that flies in the air. You have to recognize at least that much. And they can even ride on objects. You have to believe that much if you know your Bible. For example, Elijah rode on a chariot with horses of fire. Another example is in Ezekiel 1, these four spiritual beings, and they got wheels, circular things flying around, following along with them. But these are just a few examples. There's just so many in the Bible. If you're a Christian, you have to at least believe that much. So we believe that these are just terms, UFOs and aliens, okay? I'm not talking about cartoon shows where you see these little green Martians. But you got to realize a lot of these comics or these stories, they don't just come out of thin air. They come from something real or something what they've heard. Then it becomes exaggerated, then it becomes something like a comic book story or fiction, right? We have to understand that at least in the Bible, there is, quote unquote, an alien and a UFO in the Bible. That one we can all agree with. But even in the real world, they're seeing that. They're seeing that. They're seeing that there's some kind of, at least what they call it, unidentified aerial phenomenon. That's unexplainable. And they're getting into it. This is a title from Axios. U.S. government releases highly anticipated UFO report. This was last year, June 25th, 2021. Here's another article from NBC News. You know what Obama said? Title of the article, Obama on UFO videos. We don't know exactly what they are. You know what he said? He acknowledged it. He actually admitted, quote, what is true, and I'm actually being serious here, is that there is footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. That's what Obama said. And this was 
you got to realize, I could be wrong about this, but this was even years ago. So I'm building up the years up till last year, okay? Here's another one. Title of the article from Science. This is from Science itself. Pentagon UFO study led by researcher who believes in the supernatural. You got to realize that Travis Taylor is the one, and he was acknowledged as that chief scientist or the one in charge working along with the government, and they're entrusting him as that chief scientist to explain about the UFO phenomenon. And he believes in the supernatural realm. He even believes that much. That's really big. Why would the government rely on this guy? Why not on a real scientist who doesn't believe in the supernatural, but in the real science? Why would the government trust a guy like that? Come on, that's right. There's something going on here. Something's going on. Here's another one. This is big. He's, he's the big guy from Harvard, an astronomer, Scientific American. And I mentioned, his, I mentioned him several times. Title of the article, Astronomer Avi Loeb says, Aliens have visited, and he's not kidding. This is a guy from Harvard, guys. This is a Harvard University professor. Now, there's no doubt it's building up credibility, this stuff. And especially this year, merely two months ago, May 17, 2022. Title of the article from NPR, The military's UFO database now has info from about 4 hundred reported incidents. This is huge. There's no way this is becoming a secret in the public eye. Now they're recognizing, and the government and scientists are getting involved, this is something we should at least study. You got to realize NASA is even getting involved in this. I don't know if you notice that. Just type down UFO and NASA, and they're putting money they're putting effort exploring this, investigating the UFOs. The title of the article from Space, get ready for this, 2022 could be a turning point in the study of UFOs. This year is where they're going to put all their effort into studying the UFOs, because it's gotten so big that you can't hide it as much anymore. What's going on? The globalists, they're not releasing as much so that the world gets into shock mode, but they just release just enough. Why? You can be programmed into it. You can be normalized into it. Oh, I've heard about that, but once you hear that report, they put a new news, right? And then you soon forget about it and you don't think too much about it. So then it's swimming in your unconscious mind where you recognize that the government is seeing UFO, but you're not making a big deal on it because you don't spend much time concentrating on it because there's so much other busy news and new news going on. See, slip it in. Just enough exposure to normalize the people. But 2002, that's going to be the turning point. In fact, it's going to be pushed. If the globalists are behind this and Satan is undoubtedly behind this, he's pushing this even faster. Why? Because that Antichrist, how is he going to come down? How are they going to be receptive to him? So he has to push this agenda faster. Here's another one from Washington Post. Title of the article, The Parallels Between UFOs and COVID-19 Continue. That's the title of the article from the Washington Post. You know what he said? This is pretty, whoa. <laughs> he was going on a whole spiel, this article, that the government, now they're concentrating more money, and he's mourning about the government putting more money and concentration into UFOs more than Billy Barf. That's what's going on with the government right now. You know that? He says, as strange as it sounds, five years from now, the United States government is likely to know more about UFOs than the origins of Billy Barf. 
Can you believe that? I'm quoting from a liberal news source, guys. Five years from now, he's saying, the United States government will know more about this than this. What's going on? You know why? The devil is preparing for his coming. He wants the world to recognize and be full of knowledge of him, but not trying to investigate how did this occur? How did this happen? Because the more people who dug up into this one, the more they were rebelling, right? The more that they dug up the origins of how this happened, there were people who were getting, who were mistrusting their government and who were rebelling and who were speaking out. Well, the devil can't have that. He's going to have this one be more of the focal attention eventually, and then people will slowly transition from this to here. Think about that. He's no doubt ushering his coming. If the Antichrist is Catholic and he's going to be a pope, which uh, Protestants have always preached about and Great Awakening Revival preachers have always pointed out, Babylon of Revelation 17, 18 is the Vatican and the Pope is the Antichrist. Amen. They've always done that. If the Pope is that Antichrist, how do the Catholics think about this? Wouldn't they have to speed up and keep up with the UFO phenomenon too and be very receptive? Of course. This was years ago, guys. This is 2008 they were ready. Title of the article in May 22nd, 2008 from Catholic uh, news from the Catholic Review, from the Catholic Review, title of the article, Vatican astronomer says if aliens exist, they may not need redemption. You know what he meant by that? Because humanity is the one part of fallen creation, thus we need redemption. But if, the, if we encounter these aliens, they don't need redemption like we do. Wow. They can be automatically considered as our saved brothers and sisters in Christ. Read that article. It will alarm you. It says, why don't we call them our brother and sister? Here's another one. This is the Vatican's chief astronomer who said that too. Just look up that article. If you think that was wild, here's something else even more so. Title of the article, this is from America. The Jesuit Review. Oh, the Jesuits. That's the secret group that you want to look out for, right? The Jesuits. They would probably know about this. They were way ahead, guys, of their times. Title of the article, UFOs are back in the news and Catholics are ready to deal with any theological questions on alien life. They've been ready, whereas the Christian world has not been. This guy's name is, uh, I think, Guy Consol Consolmagno. He's head of the Vatican Observatory, and he's sometimes called the Pope's astronomer. Wow. He says, when he was talking about aliens with the reporter, the reporter asked if you'd be willing to baptize an alien. He said, only if she asked. Now, if you knew about the Pope, remember the Pope was willing to baptize the aliens. This was years ago. Now we got Jesuits already in the game. Why is the Jesuits ready? Maybe because the Pope was a Jesuit too. These guys might know something years ahead. He also talks about, if you read that article, a lot of things would make you feel very troubled. He mentioned about we have to think about the possibility of opening up to those and the reporter writes opening up to those principalities and powers out there did you hear what i said guys he was thinking about the possibility uh, he was thinking about preparing to open up their arms for principalities and powers out there wow. okay you know what that is in ephesians 6 yeah. that's satan's minions yeah. Read that article. You know what? You don't believe me. Let me read it for you, okay? I'll read it for you, okay? The person says here, the reporter writes, 
I find that uh, quote really quickly, I try to help my students understand and appreciate a wider, more open-minded view of the universe and how recognizing the existence of other powers and principalities might break down their largely myopic worldviews. Any of you want to be a Catholic after that? <laughs> you know who's the politician's name who tried to run for president? Who's online with the Vatican? The Vatican's go-to guy who's open, Marco Rubio. He's Catholic. Did you look at the, when the UFO reports came out, who's the politician that really wants to push it? Marco Rubio. Isn't that strange? And he's a Catholic. There's no doubt elitists and globalists are familiar with the UFO and they're accepting that existence and they're preparing for it. Elon Musk, the guy who undoubtedly is paving the way for the Antichrist with all this technology, I mean, that's the guy who's changing history, our whole world, with what he's doing. Even he himself is not stupid. If you look at Reuters' article, this is what happened when he was trying to back out the, bill, uh, the billion dollars with Twitter. You heard about that on the news? Well, when he was doing that, and he's not really conversing well with the Twitter staff, he actually mentioned this. Title of the article from Reuters, In call with Twitter staff, Elon Musk muses on space aliens company's future. Isn't that wild? While he was on a conversation uh, with the Twitter staff, he was, he was talking about preparing in the future for aliens. <laughs> There's something going on. I believe this thing is paving a way to everything of what's going on. That's what I believe. You might say, why so? Because the devil incarnate has to come in in order for him to come in. The world needs to be comfortable with it enough where when he comes down, they're going to think it's Avengers. This is pretty cool. Do you know how much the world is being receptive to this? This might, this might shock you. Title of the article from ABC News, July 2nd, 2022. World UFO Day observed by believers seeking the truth. So this is a worldwide phenomenon where people want to get into the truth that I wonder if these beings exist. And a lot of them, a good number of them, are actually welcoming it and want to meet them and see them. This is even more so with the Pew Research Center. Title of their article. Get ready for this. This is why the Antichrist will come in without a problem. You know why? Title of the article from the Pew Research Center. Most Americans believe in intelligent life beyond Earth. Few see UFOs as a major national security threat. Did you hear that, guys? Majority, most People in America believe in that UFO alien phenomenon thing. And few of them have very trouble, few of them have issues of them coming down and causing wreaking havoc. They think, no, this is a great thing. You know how many? 65% believe in that. Pew Research Center. The devil, he's amping up his game. He's pushing this. I think there's something to this with what happened with the Georgia Guidestones recently, leadership changing, and then what we went through with Billy Barth. But this is a theory. You ready for this? All right, I'm going to say all of this at once. So open your ears, okay? I'm going to say all of this at once and then break it down one by one. If this thought of mine is correct, then this is going to be very, very important. So even if I'm off, guys, the thing is, if it turns out that there is some possibility to this, when we look at scriptures and other documented sources that I show you, then this is something you can't just dismiss easily. This is something at least to seriously consider. I'm not saying believe that it's provable 100%, but at least to seriously consider if this thought 
has some sort of possible weight to it. Because if what I say is true, this is going to be so important and even detrimental to humanity. Okay, this is my thought. Ready? What if Billy Barf was launched because A, the globalists want to prepare the world for the coming of Satan incarnate and his aliens, alien demons to enter our world in their full-fledged demon forms that humanity can't interact and handle and consequently cause a zoonotic, zoonotic spread, like people were saying, consequently cause a zoonotic spread that can wipe out the population. And that is why the globalists need to practice this population control several times so that if those reports are true, that those globalists were responsible about the spread of Billy Barf, HIV, swine flu, and other wacko conspiracies that you've heard about. Certain epidemics, in order to create a stronger human race while the weak die out. Then B, the strong who survive it, who adapt through these changes in these evolving processes, they can finally, they survive, and the weak has died out, and the strong who survive, they are fit enough to open up their gates in the world and then welcome in the alien demons and the Antichrist, and then they can survive in their interactions with them as a result. And then they will open up their gates like the Tower of Babel did, and welcome in the alien demons and the Antichrist into their world, which is why there are suddenly projects invested in it with UFO space portals, metaverse portals, they called it, and CERN, where they called it portals, which leads to C, the final location to open the portals and welcome the alien devils and the Antichrist will be the Temple Mount in Israel. And then D, finally, the strong who survive and who can adapt and interact with these alien demons, can live with longevity in a fourth Reich millennium of Satan, just like they did at Genesis 6, where they were able to live longer years, with Satan reigning as King of Kings and Lord of Lords on the Temple Mount of Jehovah God. Crazy thought, you say, right? <laughs> and that's pretty much a lot. Let's go one by one. Shall we go? Come on, this might surprise you. And what I'm telling you, what you might first think is, this is too much. It's actually very, very possible. It is very, very possible scientifically, historically, and biblically speaking. Let's go. Okay. First of all, Exodus 33. Exodus chapter 33. A, what did I mention? I mentioned A, the globalists want to prepare the world for the coming of Satan incarnate and his alien demons to enter our world in their full-fledged demon forms. That way humanity uh, can handle and interact with them. But humanity and their state are too weak and cannot interact with that. Scientifically speaking, you cannot do that. And that's the reason why it consequently can cause a zoonotic, uh, zoonotic spread that can wipe out the population. Hence, the globalists, they need to do this population control thing several times or a zoonotic spread several times where if the reports are true that they were the ones responsible for the current spread of diseases that we've seen throughout past history, they're doing this so that the weak can die out and then the fittest can survive, the strong can survive. And hence, that's where you get that conspiracy about population control, right? Well, let's do this one by one. First of all is this, can mankind interact and handle God? If God were to be present here, if God showed up right now, do you think we would survive and interact with him? No, you would die. Yeah. Exodus chapter 33, yeah. verse 20. And he said, thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and what? Live. Why? Because God is a different being from the human plane. Yeah. What if other beings who are not as powerful as God, but they're more powerful than us, that aura of great power that's so overwhelming, 
more overwhelming than us, like devils and angels? What if we were to interact with them? Can we handle that? Go to Daniel 8. Daniel 8. Daniel 8. Daniel chapter 8. I believe all of this, what you hear, is tied to one thing. The coming of Satan incarnate himself. That's what you're going to notice in this board. See, all of this, how it's tied together, is the incarnation of Satan, his coming. They're preparing for his coming. Why would, the, why would Satan want that with his children? Because God's children does the same thing. They're preparing for his coming. When, they rapture, when he raptures us out of this world... And then the tribulation saints, they have to prepare for his coming too when they get raptured. Amen. And the remaining saints, when they enter the millennium, they have to prepare for his coming. Why won't the devil do that? Isn't this mind-blowing? I told you this will be big. Look at Daniel chapter 8, verse 16. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Ulai, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So it's an angel, right? And Daniel is talking, interacting with him. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. See, he can't handle it. Mentally, physically, he can't handle that. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. See, his body can't handle it. He had to get some supernatural help. But he touched me and set me upright. See, he had to get an E.T. touch, you know, <laughs> where he can get something. Look at uh, verse 25. This is the Antichrist, right? 25. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Daniel hears about this Antichrist. He sees the vision of the Antichrist. When he sees this alien being of Satan incarnate, the Antichrist, Daniel what? He was strong. No, verse 27, and I, Daniel, fainted and was sick, quarantined for maybe 14 days. Afterward, I rose up and did the king's business. You go home and pray about that for a while. Isn't that something? That's why God, what did he have to do to interact and talk to humans? He had to be God manifested in the flesh. flesh. In the flesh. Amen. That's, good, Pastor. That's why God had to manifest in the flesh. Look at wow. Psalm 8. Here's a bigger one. Here's a bigger one. Look at Psalm 8. Yeah, this is crazy. I told you. Look at Psalm 8. Psalm 8. Now, this is even a more mind-blowing one. If God had to manifest in flesh so that humans can talk and interact with God, how much more so with angels, right? So then, if the devil and his uh, fallen angel beings have to come down, how much is that gap that hum humanity have to evolve to perhaps interact with them? Believe it or not, Maybe just a little bit more mutation, just a little bit more, can close that gap where we're fit enough to at least talk and to interact with the angelic beings. You might say, really? Look at Psalm 8. Psalm 8, verse 4. Psalm 8, verse 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him what? Just... A little lower than the angels it's not that much of a gap that's why they need to do this a few more times they keep saying your immune system is not enough right they keep saying that is not enough right why because they just need a little bit more so that they can reach that point where humanity can survive and thrive in a world and an ecosystem where the Antichrist and his alien beings can interact with them well. You think I'm wild? 
Well, look at the documented sources. This is from WION, their news. Isn't it interesting that when this got up, this got up the same time? Didn't you know that? Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? Why would they do that? Title of the article, UFO sightings in U.S. rose sharply during the Billy Barf phenomenon data reveals. What, what in the world? What's going on here? Could it be what's going on? This is wild, so listen up right here. What if, because their coming is even closer, and the people responsible for this spread, or whoever's responsible for this spread, know that these guys are coming and their activity is growing even more, they're like, we got to amp up our game. We got to make it where the strong fit and survive and the weak die out. And we got to be ready that way when they come down, we can welcome them in and interact with them. You, you think I'm crazy? This is real. This is from SciTech Daily. Title of the article, you never thought about this? You ever thought about what if an alien comes down here on Earth, can they interact with a human? Basic scientists know this. You can't do that. Why? Biological organisms that are foreign to our current ecosystem, when they come down, that can be invasive, that could be even dangerous to us. Yeah. Isn't Satan's beings a different ecosystem, yeah. biologic, uh, biology than ours? Yeah. And those fallen angelic beings? How are we going to have Genesis 6 then, huh? With the yeah. humans intermingling with those fallen beings, those aliens. Unless we go through some, what wow. scientists have talked about, evolution. Whoa. So we can keep up with the evolving process. And as Darwin said, the strong, the fittest survive, the weak die. Those who don't follow along with the times, who can adapt that well, they die out. Wow. Title of the article from SciTech Daily, Alien Microorganism Research Shows Humans and Other Mammals Could Struggle to Fight Space Germs. That's real. If they, those foreign biological organisms came down, that's normal with our biological organisms. We can't adapt to that. So we have to resist it. Our immune has to get stronger. We have to have this where we can adapt even more. And is this making sense? Wow, yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is making a way a lot of sense. Yeah, this is making way too much sense, okay? Now here's another one from Nature. And I'm quoting you professional article sources, okay? Title of the article from Nature, and this is a research paper. This is just very basic. Biologic, this is interesting. Get ready for this. Biological invasions facilitate, facilitate what? Remember what the world called this? Zoonotic, zoonotic. What does that mean? That means that it was from whether bat, snake, or some animal. So that's where it came from. It came from something zoonotic. That's how... Billy Barf spread upon people to people. And that's why the people's immune system and biology has been changing and adapting in a different ecosystem and world because of something zoonotic. What about an alien thing, huh? Title of the article, Biological Invasions Facilitate Zoonotic Disease Emergences. Now, a lot of you believe, like I do, this ain't something naturally done in a zoonotic way. We believe that somebody, how should I use a phrase? That way, the online don't misunderstand me, Mr. AI. Somebody deliberately pulled off his belt and dropped his pants. That's what we believe what deliberately happened, okay? So, but... You know what, they say, uh, there are interesting reports about people saying Billy Barf is connected to snake or bats, and even secular news sources were saying that. So what if, yeah, it is something zoonotic, but it is something that was somebody purposely pulled off his belt and let the pants fall. How about that? 
the way that I use words, or I forgive me nowadays. <laughs> but this is interesting from a professor in Arizona, Paul Davis. Now, uh, this is from The Guardian. The article is from The Guardian, but I don't trust the source. I trust more of what the professor is saying. So this is what the professor is saying. Title of the article is, Viruses May Exist, Elsewhere in the universe, warn scientists. That's what he says. He says this. Viruses, Professor Paul Davies, suggests viruses may form vital part of ecosystems on other planets. Wow. What? You know what they're saying? Yeah. Virus is necessary because a lot of scientists know this too, is that you know, actually, to be honest, we wouldn't exist without virus. You know why? Because that adaptation process, that resistance process, is necessary in our ecosystem for us to survive and to continue. Look at that article. Look what he said about that. It's important for ecosystems with other planets, he says. Look, these players are not stupid, man. They know. They're way ahead. That's why this is important. Why? Because if Satan is coming and some of these guys really acknowledge some being out there who's coming, you know what they're going to do? They're going to prepare. Just like Christians prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. Then uh, think about this. Then the fittest who survive from all of this, right? Who adapt, who successfully can uh, get into and live in this kind of ecosystem and world, they have to welcome, welcome in Satan incarnate and his alien angels. How are they going to do that? Why do you think CERN is so infatuated and talks about some kind of portal? Metaverse talks about entering a different realm a virtual realm outside of the human realm, and they call that a portal. And scientists have been fascinated and wondering about black holes and other kind of portals that ties to UFO. Why is this all of a sudden the whole world and civilization into that? Yeah. Unless Satan wants to prepare his coming and he wants them to open a portal. Do we believe mankind can, is trying to open a portal and that there is a portal out there that you can open? where the human world can interact with the spirit world? Yes. Revelation 4. Revelation 4. And Genesis 11. Revelation 4 and Genesis 11. I'm sorry that tonight's teaching, I'm not talking about your best life now and how much God loves you. I know it just ruins your night and tonight's Bible study is very, very boring and it doesn't appeal you. <laughs> Look at Revelation chapter 4, and we'll look at verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a what? Door was opened in heaven. Look at this now, which said, come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Look at that. God's opened a door in heaven and told John in the human world, come inside through this door and enter what? Heaven with me. See, there is a door, a portal, a gateway, an opening from the human realm to the spirit realm. Now look at Genesis 11. This is ancient. What mankind is doing right now is repeating history. Amen. It's repeating Genesis, what they've tried to do with Satan and his evil beings. There's no doubt. From what I see here, it's all repeating it. Biblically speaking, these possibilities, I'm definitely open-minded to it, not rejecting it or dismissing it very easily, especially when I look at the Bible. Genesis chapter 11. What did they say? They said at verse 4, remember, they're building a tower of Babel, right? Why are they building this tower of Babel? And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now, obviously, that's just stupid. Who can ever reach up to heaven? Unless God thinks it wasn't stupid. Unless God knew that nothing would stop them.
from doing it. Look what he said. God didn't think it would be stopped. God knew that they could go beyond stopping, that they could pull it off. Look what God said. In verse 6, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. See, God knew they could pull it off. But you know what's interesting? This is greater evidence. When they built that Tower of Babel, God has a play on words. Later on, if you read the verse, this is Hebrew, right, in Genesis? So when God called it Babel in Hebrew, it meant confusion. It meant Babel, Babel. But if you look at uh, Akkadian sources, and Akkadian sources, or was it Sumerian, I forgot, or Chaldean, or Babylonian, which is the cultural history of Tower of Babel, where it's located, you know what Babel means? Gateway to the gods. That's why God had to do a play on words and sh prove to them, you want to call it Babel? I'll babble back at you. Let's call it confusion in Hebrew. I like a play on words. That's something, isn't it? This changes the whole ball game of everything you heard about what they're doing. It's one simple thing, the coming of Satan. That's it. That's what I think. Uh, look at Revelation 2. Revelation 2. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, excuse me, 2 Thessalonians 2. So A was something where they can prepare for mankind to adapt, survive. That's why they need this population control thing several times. Zoonotic spreads where we can adapt, survive, and then get ready for the next one to adapt and survive. And then finally, when... Okay, we're at the angelic level, so when those aliens come down and there's a zoonotic spread, it won't be that bad. Okay, that's A. B is they're building a gateway. They have to build a gateway so that those gods, or what we know in the Bible to be devils, to enter. All right, if they're going to build that open gate, what do you think is one of the most important entrances or gateways to Satan in the world? If you're going to open up a portal or a gate for him, what is one area he's interested in? It ain't Washington, D.C. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. It ain't America. Yeah. You know what he's interested in? The Temple Mount. Yeah. Look at 2 Thessalonians 2. Satan incarnate, the Antichrist, wants God's temple where he had it originally, at the Temple Mount. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. It says the son of perdition, right? So that's the Antichrist. Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the where? Temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He wants to temple mount. Why? Because he wants to be the one to fulfill scripture. I am Jehovah God, where I will reign as king of kings and lord of lords. And we will have a forthright, excuse me, a millennial kingdom of a thousand years. Kind of like Hitler with a thousand years that he wanted, right? Forthright and I will be known as the Lord Jesus Christ to all these people. That's what he wants. He wants the worship of mankind, to treat him like God, because that's what he always wanted. What did he want ever since he fell? It's so simple. What, what is his true intention he always wanted? To be worshipped as God, to be like God. That's all he ever wanted. So, is there documented sources for this? Yeah. Title from NBC News. Former Israeli space security chief says extraterrestrials exist and Trump knows about it. Yeah, Israel is preparing for that. Yeah, the devil's going to have them ready. Oh, they even knew that. You know what it says here? A galactic federation has been waiting for humans to reach a stage where we will understand what space and spaceships are. Isn't that crazy? What if he's waiting and they're preparing so that they can reach that stage after several this, and then he can come in. Here's another one. Israel is where all the action is. You've got to pay attention to Israel. This is from the History Channel, okay? Have you ever heard of the documentary Ancient Aliens or the series on that? Yeah. 
You know what the title of this video is? Ancient Aliens. Is Temple Mount a gateway to heaven? Wow. And actually, the big three religions that you would think the Antichrist has a play with, which is, we know, Catholicism, Islam, Judaism, guess what? All three agree. All three agree the Temple Mount is something significant where it has some connection to God or gods. Or actually God, because they only believe in one true God, which is easier for the Antichrist, right? I am the one true God. So why is it that they would see that as a gateway to heaven? And what supports it is the Smithsonian Magazine as well. Title of their article is What is Beneath the Temple Mount? But if you look at those two sources that I gave, the big three religions consider this to be the spot. Why? Think about Jacob's ladder. Some of them are wondering, some of them were saying, that Jacob's ladder, this is where it was, where it connected to heaven and earth. Wow. A portal, an entrance, a doorway. Muhammad, some Muslims would say, or a lot of them do say, that's the Temple Mount where he ascended, went up. So see, there's that portal, that entrance to heaven. He ascended there. People were saying that that's where uh, David offered his sacrifice to God. Yeah. That's where people said Isaac was going to be offered as a sacrifice to God. And that's where people say that Jesus Christ died on the cross. And if it is true that Jesus Christ died on the cross at that Temple Mount, where did he go immediately when he died? He went down to hell and he ascended to heaven, taking saints down in Hell, which is Abraham's bosom, Amen. the Old Testament saints, up to heaven. There's a gateway, entrance, pathway of heaven to hell then. What do you think Satan's looking at down there while he's in hell? I want to be like the Most High. I want to exalt myself above the stars. And you know what he's, he's waiting for? That portal, that entrance to get up there. Through that temple mount. If that, all of that is true, where Jesus died, descended, and ascended, and then reports about Mohammed, and then Jacob's ladder, and stuff like that. Where do people get all these ideas on, huh? Think about it. Go to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. This is the goal of Satan. It's not a secret and you got to go, oh, what's the big secret? And this is really deep. There's something they're hiding and we got to find it. No, it's so simple, but it's so complex and secretly hidden that people just missed it like it was in front of their eyes and they just missed it. All of this is tied to one thing. Satan wants to go up to heaven and be like God. It's that simple. That's why all of this has to happen. Look at Isaiah 14. Now, for some of you who don't know, this is tribulation context, because look at verse 15. Yeah. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Yeah. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness? Well, obviously the world don't see Satan that way right now. This is in the future, after the tribulation. When God conquers him and the kings of the world will see Satan down there. But what did he say before that? This is what he said at the tribulation. This is what he said at the end times. Verse 12. If this is tribulation context, what is Satan saying? In verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the Most High. See, they have to prepare that temple mount, that entrance for him. That way, when he get up here, and this is tribulation context, right? Isaiah 14. He can properly say, time to go up to heaven. Time to go up there. If that's that portal. Any of you want to fast a little bit and seek God's counsel on this matter a bit more? Take some serious Bible study? 
Look at Genesis 5 and Genesis 11. Genesis 5 and Genesis 11. All right, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Thank you for your patience. Let me wrap it up. I know that this has been boring, so let me finish it quickly, okay? Genesis 5 and Genesis 11. If they're able to make that portal and that opening and then conjure up those devils to come on down, just like the Satanists, the witches always talk about some portal and gate, right, for spirits to come in. See, there's no doubt. There has to be portals or gateways. So when the wicked world finally opens that up and they're able to do that with the Temple Mount, and if that Temple Mount is a portal to heaven and to hell as well, if that's the case, the Bible mentions the Antichrist will come up out of hell, right? Then he can come out in front of that Temple Mount. When all these things occur, then the people who went through so many of these processes can finally, are, they can somewhat fit and adapt and enough to intermingle, right? And to create their own kingdom with those fallen beings. Because we're receptive. Who doesn't want to have sex with Wonder Woman and Thor, right? Who doesn't want to intermingle with diversity? Because this is a world of inclusivity and diversity and blah 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 itty, 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 unities. Bunch of idiots, that's what it is for itties. Uh, so they do all of this because of so many processes that they went through. They finally reached what we've always wanted at Genesis 6. These people lived up to 900 years. But God did something to this earth. Some say that there was a water covering or water uh, thing that came up from the ground, either or, but there was no doubt the climate and the environment, the atmosphere, was different in Genesis 5. If you look at that ver chapter, they lived up to 900 years. That was the average lifespan. But when you go to Genesis 11, isn't it interesting, right after the Tower of Babel moment, God just dropped the years. What's he trying to do? He's trying to put mankind for thousands of years where they don't interact with those devils until today. We got the science, the technology, the esoteric knowledge, and all this stuff where we can open up again. Wow, isn't that something? You know what they're trying to do? Live 900 years. Live 1,000 years. Why? Because the devil wants to imitate Jesus Christ, a thousand-year kingdom on earth. And that's what Hitler wanted to try. A Third Reich, he called it. But this one's going to be a Fourth Reich from the Antichrist. Luke chapter 17, verse 26 through 27, what did the Bible say about the coming of the Son of Man? It's going to be like the days of what? Noah, wow. where they're marrying Guess what? This is what I believe personally. This ain't doctrine, but I believe personally. That's what they're trying to do right now. Trying to go back to the days of Noah so they can live that long so that they can marry. That's something. But this ties to everything that all what you've heard about with all this. It ties everything. It makes so much sense. And then let's put it to the conclusion about the Georgia Guidestones. Why? Was that all important? How is this tied to that naturally? It had 10 commandments, so to speak, 10 rules, kind of like the Christians who have their 10 commandments. You know what the Georgia Guidestone said? That some people believe globalists have been following and have been behind. Here's one of the rules. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. See, population control. They're trying to fade out the ones that aren't fit in this new world era. Thir another rule. Unite humanity with a living new language. Isn't that Tower of Babel where they messed up, where God messed up their Antichrist kingdom, the Genesis 6 kingdom that they could have had? God messed it up with different languages. 
And this guy, whoever this spook is that wrote all those words, this spooky guy, he was talking about a living, I know the solution is we got to get back to one language again. This, whoever wrote this Georgia Guidestone thing knew something. Third, uh, here's another one. It's not third, but here's another one, what they stated, Georgia Guidestones. Prize truth, beauty, love, Seeking harmony with the infinite. Wow, just like those alien beings out there, the space out there, where atheists have been saying it's infinite and stuff like that, dark matter, where religionists have been saying these guys have been going on for eternity, whereas humanity was blimp. Georgia Guidestones was talking about things where it was paving a way for the Antichrist kingdom. Isn't that something? And globalists have been following that. And the world is heading toward that direction. You know what the point of all this? See this world right here? It's to mingle with this. See that? It's to mingle with this. And this thing, whether it was the judgment of God or they're trying to cover their tracks, it was wrecked. And pretty soon people aren't going to make a big deal about it. And they'll forget it. And it'll be behind them, and they can keep pushing this agenda. They can keep pushing the rules or the commandments of this agenda, and pretty soon he can come in, and they will open up that portal. But we need to go a little. How many more times? This is scary. How many more times, guys? Especially when they kept saying it's not enough, our immunity. It's not enough. With how many more times? Let's pray. Amen. Father God, I pray that this has been eye-opening and that uh, people have seen that the devil's crowd, the world, is preparing for his coming, whereas Christians, we're preparing for Christ's coming. Help us. That's why we must be busy with your coming, preparing. And that's what the devil doesn't want us to do, Lord. He wants us to follow how the world does things and prep for his coming. Be like the world in a job, security, family, and all of that is part of Satan's system. How can we be so blind to prep for his coming? Be a part of that process. Be a part of that system. May we be away from that system and be a part of prepping for your coming, your return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.